So folks, this weekend, evidently Donald Trump is having a big gala event at Mar-a-Lago. A big event. He's trying to beat Joe Biden's fundraising that, you know, he did with um, President Clinton and, and Obama. I think they raised, what, $26 million. He's trying to beat that, right? So what he's done is he's assembled a whole, um, I don't know, circus of of some really odd people, to be honest with you. And I've got an article here that I want to show you. I want to kind of dig into this a little bit more. So this is an article from The Hill, and it talks about the Biden campaign hits Trump over guests at upcoming Palm Beach high dollar fundraisers. So what the Biden campaign is doing is saying, hey, look, you know, he's he's got a panoply of people that are just not, not good um, in so many ways. And I'm going to get into that. And we're going to just kind of tear that article apart a little bit and see if that's exactly what Donald Trump is doing. Does he have a lot of unsavory characters at this event that he's assembled? And interesting stuff. But before we get there, folks, I got to show you this. Okay. So, you know, Donald Trump posted $175 million fraud bond in this article. Um, is coming to us from Forbes, and it says that it could be invalidated if insurance company doesn't prove it can cover it. Oh, what do you mean? You mean like if an insurance company comes out and says that we're going to bond Donald Trump, they they actually have to have the money <laughs> to be able to do that? You mean somebody's checking? They're they're checking the the make sure the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Really? I mean, we can we can rest assured that this is happening, and it's it's a good thing. So the thing that I want to show you right here is at the bottom of this article, swoop all the way down at the bottom, surprising fact. <laughs> and it's updated bond, the company that's providing that $175 million bond for Donald Trump. And it's updated bond, look at this, Knight reported a surplus to policyholders of $138 million, which is basically the company's net worth. Huh? made up of its assets minus its liabilities. Since that's less than the $175 million that Trump owes, that means if Trump's bond wasn't fully secured through collateral or he couldn't pay the amount when it came time to do so, paying off the debt would wipe out the company's cash. Oh, God. Oh. Huh. Now you tell me. Okay. So there you have it. The $175 million uh, could be a problem for this company even. So we're going to watch that story as it comes out. But back to the story with this, uh, the Hill article here, folks. I mean, there's some interesting stuff going on. So let's just sort of fact check this and see what Donald Trump's doing this weekend. I uh, Gosh, I hope there's some good video coming out of it. I love that. And the article goes in to say Trump is aiming to outraise Biden's $26 million fundraiser in New York City last week with the event hosted Saturday by hedge fund founder John Paulson. The event is expected to raise $33 million, what, $7 million more than Biden just raised. And it says, so this is the Biden campaign. They say, if you want to know who Donald Trump will fight for in a second term, just look at who he's having over for dinner Saturday night. Tax cheats, scammers, racists, and extremists. Biden campaign senior spokesperson Serafina Chitika said. She goes on to say, make no mistake, Donald Trump will do the bidding of his billionaire buddies instead of what is best for the American people. He'll take their checks and cut their taxes and leave hardworking Americans behind, shipping their jobs overseas, gutting Social Security and Medicare ripping away health care protections, and banning abortion, she added. So let's take a look at this, um, folks. I mean, those are some pretty strong words, but are they true? So the Biden campaign pointed to Paulson, whom Trump has reportedly considered for Treasury Secretary if he wins, who said during a 2018 New York University panel that Social Security could be switched to defined contribution from defined benefit. So my, I guess my point in this whole thing, folks, is what he's claiming th that he's going to push for, presumably, if he gets um, to be Treasury Secretary, is that if you put $10 in, you should only take $10 out. 
and from me, the, these are supposedly, a lot of these people are the titans of industry, supposedly, that Trump has got assembled here. Titans of industry. And the problem that I have with that is, with the introduction of robotics and AI, jobs are going to be going away. So here you have the titans of industry saying, if you only put $10 in, you should only get $10 out. I don't know. I've got a problem with that, given the backdrop of AI and robotics that's going to be taking jobs away to the benefit of these titans. I mean, call me, call me silly here, but I think that the government needs to step up and not step down. So let's look at this. I found the tape here. Let's listen to what he has to say. Biggest component of that is Social Security, and he's proffering the solution. It's, it's switching to define contribution from defined benefit, and that makes all the sense in the world. You, you know, pensions are a form of saving. You should get in what you, you should get back what you ultimately put in, but if you get back more than you put in, it creates problems for future generations. So I think that's a, it's a model. It worked for Sweden. It worked completely in the private sector here in the U.S. And likely over the long term is going to be the solution we need to implement both at the <clears throat> federal level and the state and local level. So, Oh, great. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's great to hear from a titan of industry that... Um, you know, they want to go forward with this. And like I said, you've got AI, you've got robotics and whatever other pressures reduce the amount of jobs out there. And he's looking to reduce social security. I mean, these people, I swear to the, the almighty, these people are out of touch, out of touch, folks. They are definitely out of touch. And we, that's the problem that I've got with Trump. You don't need, we don't need a government that's run by the titans of industry because they will run roughshod over the American people. So let's look at this other part of the article. So it goes down to say here that uh, it also called out Jeff, Jeff Yass, folks who said this, have a look at this one. And with Jeff Yass, it said, he's a billionaire businessman and major investor in TikTok as an expected attendee who floated privatizing social security accounts in a Wall Street Journal opinion piece in 2019. Huh. Privatizing Social Security. You know who else wanted to do that, folks? Back in February of 2005, 2005, Re Republican President George W. Bush outlined a major initiative to reform Social Security, which included partial privatization of the system, personal Social Security accounts, an option to permit Americans to divert a portion of their Social Security tax into secured investments. So that's just what we need, right? Is people investing their money any which way they want to. And if the market tanks, well, now we've got a huge problem on our hands. The whole thing about social security is it's supposed to be there when you need it and privatizing it in this fashion, like George Bush wanted to do, opening it up to all sorts of market movements. So when the market tanks, I mean, everybody loses. Oh, that's great right? That's, that's exactly what we need. And take a look at this. So this is a ProPublica article that came out and, you know, these people at ProPublica do some amazing reporting. This one is meet the billionaire and rising GOP mega donor who's gaming the tax system. And who is it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, um, Jeff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You got that right. So in a nutshell, I just want to point this out to you. So in this article, so not only is he for privatizing Social Security, but he also pays such little taxes. And his firm is engaged in short-term investment, Susquehanna. Uh, they buy and sell, in, in many cases, within milliseconds, right? They provide a market, all that jazz. So here's an article that's showing that Yass's tax rate remained low even as his income grew to billions. And look at this. So when you look at from 2008 all the way to 2018, the guy never paid more than 20%. The highest was 2018, where he paid 20% in taxes. The rest of the years were far below that. And the way that he does it is, is like this. One former Susquehanna executive recalled 
Yass acknowledging using a trading strategy in which the main goal was not to make profitable trades, but to avoid taxes. Taxes, according to Yass's former colleagues, are an obsession for the billionaire. As one former employee put it, they hate effing taxes. <clears throat> so nobody likes paying taxes, right? But like everybody says, you got to pay your fair share of taxes. I mean, we all do. And why can't this guy pay his fair share? So what he's doing is he's using this, this strategy where he's putting in short and long-term trades. And the article says, when IRS auditors scrutinized the deal, they found that Susquehanna had violated rules against betting for and against the exact same stocks. The IRS demanded the firm pay tens of million dollars in back taxes. The partners refused. Yes, refused, arguing the firm had broken no rules and sued the IRS and U.S. tax court in 2020. They asserted that the deal was supposed to be profitable and wasn't primarily intended to avoid taxes, but the firm also acknowledged the deal was tailored with an eye towards tax efficiency. The case is still pending, with Susquehanna currently resisting requests to overturn more documents. Oh, imagine that. Susquehanna's ability to manufacture the right kind of income has helped Yass and his partners minimize their taxes for decades. And again, it says since 2001, which is seven years longer than that chart I just showed you, Yass hasn't paid over 20% in a single year. <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's, there's another one, just like the article says here. Uh, there's another guy who's, who's uh, kind of made a, made a point out of overly creative tax accounting to the point where the, the IRS is suing him to not pay his taxes. So, yeah, that, that's another one that they've assembled here for this function coming up on Saturday or this weekend. I don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday in Mar-a-Lago. And then they also, this article points to Michael Hodges, the founder of Payday, of a Payday lender as an attendee. And, you know, in general... I don't have to tell you that payday loans are ridiculous. Uh, in general, it says here that payday loans typically have an annual percentage rate of 391% to 521%. This is calculated based on the fee, which is usually $15 to $20 per $100 borrowed and is typically paid every two weeks. Great. Oh, oh yeah, that's great. So another champion of the common man here, Michael Hodges, uh, a payday lender is going to be there as well. It also pointed out that members of the Mercer family, there's there's a good one, are Trump donors, and that the hedge fund manager Robert Mercer has argued that the Civil Rights Act was a mistake. The Civil Rights Act was a mistake. Yeah. So these are the people that are that are gravitating towards Trump this weekend and will continue to gravitate towards Trump if he wins office. The exact kind of people that you don't want influencing a president, by the way. God help us. And then it also says here that the Biden campaign has also argued that Trump's grassroots fundraising, a strong spot for him in previous campaigns, has slowed down. Yes, slowed down. And there's this article here that just came out. Uh, this is from the AP. It says Trump and the Republican Party say they raised more than $65.6 million in March. And they're both claiming, both sides are claiming that they've got a grassroots campaign. But when you look at who Trump has assembled this weekend, it's certainly not the case. He's trying to raise $33 million from the titans of industry. So what they're saying here is that uh, in this AP article, Trump and the Republican National Committee closed out the month with $93.1 million in their campaign accounts versus Joe Biden's $155 million. But Joe Biden hasn't reported yet um, that released their fundraising numbers for March, so it might be higher than that. But both sides are claiming that they've got a grassroots campaign. But when you get down to it, folks, the point about what Trump is doing this weekend at Mar-a-Lago is clearly flawed. I mean, clearly flawed. You've, they're right. So in this case, yes. Yes. You've got tax cheats, scammers, racists, and extremists. Oh, and the racist part. Yeah, we left that one out. That is John Katsimatidis, if I pronounced that correctly. He was also going to be at the dinner. Katsimatidis is a billionaire who ran for New York City mayor in 2013, compared former President Obama's plans in 2013 to raise taxes on the wealthy to how Hitler punished the Jews. 
Well, that checks that box. So, folks, uh, I hope we get some great video coming out this weekend from this event. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun if it does, I'm sure, with Trump reportedly on some sort of weight loss drug, you know, losing all kinds of weight and at this big dinner with these titans of industry, right? Let's see if he gets in line at the buffet for some of that chocolate cake. We'll keep an eye on it. Till next time, folks.